So I, we do have a few minutes if there are any questions uh, for, um, for Hazel Edwards. Um, I see a couple of people coming up to the mic. Um, <laughs> hi there. Thank you, Kenneth Nolan. I work for the European Commission in Brussels. So I'm a visitor and I appreciate the being allowed to visit. I've held my fire, held my questions until the cross-cutting issues. Uh, my function in Brussels is very similar to that of the federal government. And a lot of what I've seen today is some top-down, but not from very high starting point, like a mayoral vision or response to disasters. But I haven't heard a lot from the federal level. Like there's no national program to incentivize urban regeneration, etc. Well, actually, it, it actually there is such a program okay. at, at HUD, and we invited the person who runs it, Harriet Tregoni, but she was not able to come today. But um, we will try to bring her to another roundtable meeting because okay. she also was involved in starting many of the efforts here in the District of Columbia. So yeah. she has uh, some wonderful both federal and local perspectives to bring to the table, but we just weren't able to get her here today. Because at the, at the commission level, we're in a position where it's not seen as something the EU should be doing, it's member states and it's the cities themselves. Uh, nonetheless, that doesn't stop us from trying to help where we can. In Europe, it's actually the WHO runs a network of healthy cities. Um, there may be space for that here, I don't know. But what I'm missing hearing is a network of people willing to work together um, to do it in various cities. From our research side, we can incentivize and try to stimulate the market. So we, in fact, are proposing prizes, as we heard with Newper earlier today. We are proposing prize, prizes for tools for smarter cities. Also establishing networks, say, of city procurement officers or developing common standards so that people are not always reinventing the wheel or repeating old mistakes. So just a comment. I had to get it in before I had. Thank you. I think we would like to um, have links to some of those things. Um, for, maybe you can give those to Kathleen. I think those are excellent sure. examples. I can provide more information. Let me just add to that. Under Framework 7, there is a multi-city uh, research project looking at the co-benefits of health and sustainability and resilience in, in Europe. So uh, that would be another good link. Uh, let, me, let me share a recent experience. We're working with a developer in China, build, and he shared with us their master plans for Yuqing. And we looked at the master plan and we said, where are the bicycle paths? And they said, oh, China doesn't do bikes anymore. <laughs> I said, the rest of the world's trying to become like old China. So, so uh, I said, you will regret this uh, very soon if you don't uh, plan for this. But here's my uh, question. Uh, I think under this Congress, the reauthorization of the transportation uh, bill is coming up. And where is non-motorized transportation investment? Where do you think that'll play out? Is that a partisan or bipartisan? Um, issue within Congress. I mean, I, I, I have a little bit of a view on that in terms of ICT. Um, the, the major issue there is just the money period, you know, and, and the, the issues around Congress generally about appropriations because it's a very large spending bill. But I, I don't think it's a partisan issue in terms of investing in alternative transportation. And I do think that it's a very important issue to bring to the attention of Congress because that act does have an enormous amount of leverage. I, I can't even remember now who said this. I think it was um, um, actually um, the gentleman from um, UVA, um, Dr. Trowbridge, and that is um, to not focus so much on how these things are done, like building sidewalks, and to try to get policymakers to focus on outcomes like walkability. Because I do think there has been an issue that's a tendency with that kind of bill to focus on the product instead of the process, instead of the outcome, and that perhaps we health people need to get more involved 
um, with with uh, with transportation policy than we have been. Um, yeah. Well, I actually just have an announcement to make. Uh, Kathleen had suggested that I mention this to attendees. Um, the a sister roundtable of this roundtable, the Roundtable on Population Health Improvement here at IOM, is holding a workshop on December 4th, and you could see the announcement up there. It's called Achieving Meaningful Population Health Outcomes, a workshop on spread and scale. Um, and one of the panels will actually be dealing with examples from outside the health arena, including environmental justice um, and child development. So that may be relevant to folks here. Thank you. Thanks. So obviously that's uh, potentially of interest uh, to this roundtable, depending on um, how much of the environmental health we really get into in the process of the workshop. But that's, that's wonderful. Thank you. Are there, if there are not other questions, I think I'm going to invite our chair, um, Frank Lloyd, to come up and um, what was this?